Number 14, Integrated Concepts, letter A. A lightning bolt produces a rapidly varying magnetic field. If the bolt strikes the earth vertically and acts like a current in a long straight wire, it will induce a voltage in a loop a line like that in figure 23.57b. What voltage is induced? In a 1 meter diameter loop, 50 meters from a 2 times 10 to the 6 amp lightning strike, if the current falls to zero in 25 microseconds. All right, so the whole thing is that we have to just, there's a lot of information given. We have to just think about uh, what are we looking to solve for? And they're asking us what voltage is induced, right? So they're looking for uh, us to calculate the induced voltage. Now, uh, in other words, the induced EMF. So this formula over here on the right-hand side is probably the formula to start with, all right? So it says that the induced voltage or the induced EMF, you can just call it V if you want, who cares? All means the same thing is equal to negative N multiplied by now the change in magnetic flux divided then by the change in time. All right, this negative sign just represents that the voltage that's induced is gonna be opposite to that of what was um, input or basically put upon uh, the coil, but you don't even have to worry about the negative sign. We talked about that already. So um, here's the lightning bolt, uh, the current here. Uh, it says it's pointing up in the picture, but the lightning bolt would be uh, pointing down. It does. It it. Who cares? It doesn't really matter the direction. Um, so I'm actually just going to probably leave out the negative sign, or I'll leave it in, and we'll just take the absolute value at the end. It really doesn't matter. We're just going to get a positive answer. Okay. We're going to calculate the magnitude. So um, in this particular case, in order to uh, calculate this, I need to know how the flux is changing, right? And how the time is changing, and I need to know the number of loops in the particular wire. All right. So. Um, did they tell us how many loops are in the wire? Well, no, right? So I, what do we get to assume? One, zero, 10 million? We're going to assume one because I guess I think that's the most reasonable assumption. So we know that N is equal to one, all right? Now, when the, uh, remember, anytime you have a particular current, it produces a magnetic field around that current and that magnetic field then will pass through the loop and that's what's happening. As the magnetic field through this loop changes, as the magnetic field through the loop changes, the flux changes. So in other words, you're changing magnetic flux here. You're changing magnetic flux is a function of your changing magnetic field uh, in that wire that is produced by that current that is happening and then it's gone, right? So as it happens, it creates a magnetic field around it. And then when the lightning bolt is over, there is no current and therefore there is no magnetic field and therefore the magnetic field through the loop is changing. Alrighty. So what I realize now is I can substitute this basically on in for my change in magnetic flux. Okay. So we got EMF is equal to just get rid of the N because it's just one, right? So who cares? Again, you can leave the negative sign in, but I'm just going to get rid of all the signs at the end. Um, so this is going to be the changing magnetic field multiplied by the area of the loop, multiplied then by cosine of the angle uh, between, remember, the uh, normal of the area and the uh, magnetic field vector, uh, divided then all by the change in time. Now, the normal, remember, is a vector that points, uh, you know, in, in this case, it, it's perpendicular to the plane here of the coil, so it points in and out of the page. The magnetic field that then is produced here points in or out of the page at that point, so they're going to be parallel to one another. In other words, the cosine there will be zero and cosine of zero is just one, so you can reduce it on down from there, right? So instead of rewriting that, let's just get rid of it and we'll erase it, okay? All right, so now here's what we got. So another question is, well, um, what's the area of the coil? Can we find that? Well, sure, right? Sure we can. What's area of a coil of a circle? It's pi r squared. Right? So this is just going to work out to be pi r squared. Do we know the radius? Well, no, but they told us the, di the diameter. Okay, so we jump for joy because we can figure that out. So we already know we can substitute that. We got that. What's the change in time? Oh, look at that. They told us it goes, the current falls to zero in this amount of time. So that's basically the change in time that's associated with the change in the magnetic field, which then is associated with the change in the magnetic flux. Follow? Cool, because I don't. Um, anyway, ho hopefully that makes sense. Just, just, just replay that a couple of times. So, um, all right. So what we have now is we know, I know I can calculate the area. I know I can calculate 
well, I calculate it. I know I can plug in the time. Hopefully I can plug it in, right? And, um, and uh, then the magnetic field here is going to be um, changing as well. So how do we find the changing field? Well, we have to think about how do we calculate magnetic field, you know, uh, in a current, uh, excuse me, in a loop of wire that is a result of a current some distance away. And we've done this, you know, plenty of times. In other words, what's the magnetic field strength produced inside this wire that is 50 uh, meters away from this particular, uh, oops, this, hold on, what's going on here? Okay. Now I don't know what I'm doing. One second, guys. All right. Now that my hands have stopped spasming, let's try to continue. Um, so I know that the uh, magnetic field here that's produced inside the coil is a result of the current here that's traveling inside of this lightning bolt. And uh, we know a formula from the last chapter that deals with the magnetic field produced by a particular current in a wire. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to realize, I have to realize now that the magnetic field here is changing. Okay, the magnetic field here is changing and that's a result of the changing current. In other words, the current is this value in the lightning bolt and then it goes to zero, right? So now I can substitute this thing on in for my changing field, uh, magnetic field. It's really not that bad, right? If you really look at it, but there is a lot to, there is a lot to take in. So the permeability of free space multiplied by that changing current <clears throat> divided by then two pi. R, I hate when they use R here because R is like radius, right? No, it's the distance, okay? It, and you might say, well, isn't that diameter? Well, it could be, but it's the distance, all right? It's the distance from the wire to the point of interest. And we're talking about the center of the coil, all right, basically. So, um, yeah, so keep that in mind, okay? Now, uh, all right, so we got that. We'll plug in that in. Great, so that's the whole B part, right? And then let's extend this line. That's gonna be then multiplied by the area, and then down here is gonna be multiplied by the change in time. So we have everything we now need, okay? Now, if you really think about it, you might say, well, wait a minute, is it the, what distance? Is it the distance to the first part of the wire? You know, the front part, or is it the distance to the, to the center of the wire? You know, because wouldn't that be different, Andrew? Wouldn't that be different if, right, the distance to the center here is going to be, uh, you know, if this is the diameter here is uh, one meter, that means that the radius is then a half of a meter. And if I knew the distance from, the, say, this point to the edge of the wire, and that's 50, then I have to add a little half to get to the zero, to get to the meeting the middle. Um, well, yeah, that's a good point. Do they tell you? They say it's 50 meters from that strike. I don't know. Is it from the center? Is it from the edge? I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine, but I'm just going to assume it's from the center. Okay. That way I don't have to add anything or do anything like that. But if you think differently, I wouldn't necessarily disagree with you. So any case, we got to start plugging in values because we basically know everything now. The permeability of free space is four pi times 10 to the minus seventh. Okay. The change in the uh, current. Well, if it was this and then it went to zero, what's the change? Hopefully that's good at this point. So that's the change. The area then is pi r squared. So the area is going to be pi times the radius, right? That's 0.5 meters and that's squared. Okay. All then divided by two pi times the distance. So I'm just going to use the 50 meters. Okay. And then multiply by that change in time. This was 25 microseconds, but you know, we need that in seconds. So it's just 25 times 10 to the minus six. Oh boy. And this is it. Okay. So take out the calculator. Remember, it's just going to be a positive answer at the end. I'm just giving you the magnitude. So maybe to, yeah, let's just, let's simplify. I'm just going to do one quick simplification just so less plugging in might be better. That's just going to turn into a, be a two. All right. So this is basically now two times 10 to the minus seventh times then two times 10 to the sixth times then, and I already plugged in something wrong. Great. Two times 10 to the minus seventh times two times 10 to the sixth times pi times 0.5 squared divided by now parentheses uh, 50 times 25 times 10 to the minus sixth. Close those parentheses and bada bing, bada boom. There it is, it's negative, but remember, I'm just gonna give you the absolute value. So this is 25, 251, okay, um, volts. Right. And basically the change, if you had to think about the change, you know, in the current, right, you can also say that that's final minus initial. So final zero initial was this value. So this should be negative. That negative would cancel with that negative, And that would be positive. Yeah, that's great too. Right. That's great. 
but it doesn't really matter. The, the, the sign there just tells you direction. It's not asking anything. We don't even know which way the... Yeah, so, okay. Move on, move on, move on, move on, move on. Um, wow, this, this coffee is fantastic today. Uh, letter B, discuss circumstances under which such voltage would produce noticeable consequences. I don't know, maybe if you got uh, hit by it, maybe that would be a circumstance under which such voltage would produce noticeable consequences. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it. Hopefully this video helps. And if it does, give us a hand. Subscribe, like, tell your friends. We appreciate it. And we'll see you in the next problem. Take care.